wonder what game I should review next. Ow! Hey, I know! I wasn't sure what to make of this game when I saw the trailer for it back in February, other than that I thought it looked like Dynasty Warriors. And I'll admit, I was a little skeptical at first, but I was willing to give it a try nonetheless. So how did the game turn out? Oh, right, I'm the reviewer. Gotcha. The story begins with Hyrule Castle being attacked by an army of monsters. Zelda and her bodyguard slash attendant Impa lead a group of soldiers out to fight them off, telling all the new recruits to stay in the castle. Link, who happens to be one of the recruits, responds to these orders as follows. Alright, oh, thumbs up. Ready, guys, Let's or... do this. Leroy Dragons! Link helps Impa and Zelda fend off the attack, only to have Zelda go missing after the dust settles. Impa then asks Link to join her and her soldiers in their search for Zelda, and Link says no. Okay, okay, he agrees to be the hero again. Though you'd think he'd be tired of it by now. In case you couldn't tell, this is a war hack and slash game. It has you fighting through swarms of enemies in various locations and eras in Hyrule where you'll have to complete a handful of tasks in order to help your army achieve victory. These tasks usually revolve around capturing an enemy keep, stopping enemy forces from advancing, or taking down a general in their army. That being said, you won't have to do each objective immediately. In fact, you're usually given an extensive amount of time to complete each one, allowing for multitasking. Wanna go capture that keep? Go ahead! Wanna aid your soldiers in protecting one of THEIR keeps? Sure thing! Wanna beat the crap out of a chicken? You can... do that too, I guess. Link, I cannot believe this! We're under attack by an army of moblins, the Deku Tree is on fire, there's a giant spider killing your friends, and you're in here beating up a chicken?! What do you have to say for yourself? Are you even listening to me? For this next segment, I'm going to count how many times I say keep. Now as previously mentioned, capturing enemy keeps is one of the many things you must do to win the battle. Keeps are basically bases for enemy or ally soldiers to spawn in. To capture a keep, you have to defeat the enemies that guard it until the keep meter, which sort of serves as the keep's HP, hits zero. Once you've done that, the keep boss will appear. Defeat it, and the keep will be yours, and allied soldiers will be able to spawn there. But be careful, enemies can capture YOUR keeps in the same manner, so if you want to keep the keep, you have to keep your keep's HP high by aiding the soldiers guarding your keep from enemy forces who probably want to keep the keep for themselves, so keep fighting! There's a wide roster of different characters you can play as throughout your campaign. First, there's the obvious ones, such as Link, Zelda, and Impa, but there's also characters from various eras of Hyrule who will come to your aid. And of course, who could forget the perky and adorable Lana, who, for some reason, I've noticed gets a lot of hate from people. I haven't looked too deeply into this issue, but the main problem seems to be that she doesn't fit into the Zelda series. But personally, I really liked her, and she's one of my favorite characters to play as. And I may get slammed for this, but... I ship it. Is it too late to cast Flame Shield? Oh, it's too late, isn't it? You'll be able to smack most enemies around like a bunch of ragdolls, but should you really want to set their self-esteem to an all-time low, there's not one, not two, but three skill trees for each character that you can upgrade with materials you obtain from enemies. You can gain all kinds of benefits, such as being able to carry more potions, capturing keeps faster, or new combo moves that are really fun to pull off if you care to learn them. The bosses in this game are a lot of fun. Just like the ones from the more mainstream Zelda games, you'll have to expose the boss's weak point before you can start dealing any real damage. Once you do that, a weak point gauge will appear on them, which will slowly deplete as you attack them. When it hits zero, you can perform a devastating attack on them, which is oh so satisfying. If you're a Zelda veteran like myself, it should be pretty obvious what you need to do in order to expose said weak points. But even WITH the knowledge of past entries in the franchise, defeating the bosses was still quite challenging. There are plenty of extras to keep you coming back to this game, such as collectibles, a free play mode which allows you to play any level with any character, an adventure mode which has you fighting your way through an 8-bit high roll, and quite a bit of DLC with more on the way at the time of this video. 
And if you want to play with a friend, there's a two-player co-op mode with player one using the screen on the gamepad, and player two using the Wiimote nunchuck combo on the TV screen. Unfortunately, it's not very much fun if you're the second player because of major frame rate issues on the TV, as well as some unresponsive controls, which I have to say was very disappointing. If you enjoy lowering the self-esteem of an entire army of monsters, I'd highly recommend this game. It's challenging, fun, and has plenty to keep you coming back. The main problem with this game is that the frame rate would often drop in areas where there were just massive amounts of enemies and allies duking it out. And lastly, the two-player co-op mode was pretty laggy. But thankfully, the good far outweighs the bad, giving this game an 8 out of 10.